Welcome to another tutorial with Roaring Wreckers. Today, we are going to talk about parallel drum compression. Okay, this one is a little more on the uh, intermediate to advanced topics that we begin to cover in our class here at my school, but um, I want to give you this and see what you can do with it. Okay, I've created a loop here with my SoCal drum kit. It's just my personal go-to. I like the sound of it. And we're going to see if we can get a fuller and potentially punchier sound by um, adjusting some parallel compression. So I'm going to play it for you. And I want you to kind of watch what's happening down here in the meters as we see it so that we can fully understand what we're doing when we talk about this parallel compression idea. So here we go. Okay, so on the whole, the track rides at about negative 7 dB over here on our meter. Now, that's a pretty good safe place where we have plenty of headroom to work with for our transient sounds. But it's not an exceptionally loud drum part in particular, and that's okay. Loud drums don't necessarily mean anything, but it's not necessarily punchy either. Now, this is just my standard uh, track sound. It's coming out of my drum kit, going into my EQ, which is currently set perfectly flat. If you wanted to adjust the EQ, maybe we could shelf up a little bit of, of kick drum sound. Then it might sound like this. The problem being is that we've now completely gone over our... Uh, peak limiter down here. So we would need to back that back off a little bit. So now our bass drum is really driving the peak limiter down here. And we've we definitely gained up. We're at more risk of running out of headroom at this point. Um, so let's see see what we can do now with some parallel compression. So to do parallel compression, you're going to run your drum channel once on the regular non-compressed side, and the other time it's going to have to run on the bus channel. So I'm going to set up a bus one. Now, when I get to my bus one, my signal will split. Some of it will come straight down to this track channel, and some of it is now going to jump over here based on how much I tell it. And on this side, we're going to come into the audio effects, and we're going to add a compressor via this chain. Let me do that again so you see it. I went into audio effects, clicked, came down to dynamics, use my compressor, and I'm going to go into stereo mode. So here's my compressor. Now, for time's sake, I'm going to use a default for drums, and we're just going to go with rock overheads. It seems to be a good place to just use as a starting ground for producing drums. So now, currently there is no information going to this uh, compressor because I have not turned any information up. When we're going to com parallel compress, we need to send all the signal from the original to the bust channel. We can adjust the volume of the bust amount later using this slider, but if we don't send a strong enough signal, then the compressor is not going to do anything. So now we've got equal amounts of signal coming straight down and going to our compressed side. So let's see what our sound difference is. So I'm going to turn on my mixer down here in the bottom so you get a better idea of where everything is sitting. And I'm going to do that again. Okay, so you can see that my main channel is setting between negative 5 and negative 3. 
my compressed channel is jumping up to negative 1.8 and the combo is putting our stereo output over the top. So our makeup gain right here is actually probably too high. So we, we don't necessarily want that makeup gain right now because we're just adding support underneath. So I'm going to bring my makeup gain back down to 0 dBs and let's see what happens again. Now uh, the compressed channel on our bus should be um, slightly softer. Now you can see that the compressed channel is actually running softer, which is what we would expect when we apply um, a basic compressor. So now it's just a matter of us mixing these two sounds until we get the peak level of the stereo output to be right. So I'm just going to let it play. I'm going to kind of adjust till my ears tell me the right thing. Okay, so now we're riding at about a negative 2.3 on the drums. Now, if we're mixing this with a lot of other stuff in the tracks, that's still going to be too hot for our drums because by the time you start adding other stuff, you're going to blow over your peak volume again. But if this were all that we were doing, then we would have our uh, volume here at an acceptable uh, range. So you can do lots of different stuff with this. Matter of fact, you can go in with your EQ now and shape the actual EQ. Maybe you don't want as much cymbal in the compressed sound. Maybe you don't want as much bass drum in the compressed sound. You like the way the bass is hitting on its own. So now we can reshape this um, and actually begin to make it sound different. So that requires a whole different volume setup to get back to that uh, specific sound. So as you do it, just play around and see see what colors the drums the way you want it to be. This should be a creative process, not a inhibiting process. So um, this is the basics idea of parallel compression. Then from here, you need to take it and be uh, innovative as the artist. Hope this makes sense. Um, the more setup you do over here, the more you're going to change the characteristics of the sound. You might set it to uh, compress even heavier. Let's see. I'm going to turn my channel EQ back off. Let's just see where we're at now for the fun of it. Now we've created even more headroom, but we have punchier drums. It's great. We set this to be a little bit more like a limiter than a compressor. Everything's working out great. I hope this helps. Um, take some time, explore, have fun. Thanks for watching.